In today's private pilot ground school video lesson from 76 Ground School Chick, we will be talking about the altimeter types of altitude, some of the errors we can expect when using this instrument, and how to correct and mitigate them. This material will come up on your FAA written exam and the oral portion of your check ride, so let's dive in. If you take a moment to review the VFR or visual flight rules, Dame minimum equipment requirements. As outlined in FAR 91.205, one of the requirements is to have an altimeter. And given the pivotal role of the altimeter, when flying VFR, it is imperative to grasp its usage thoroughly. Before going any deeper, we must begin by discussing the various types of altitudes. Indicated altitude, true altitude, pressure altitude, absolute altitude, and density altitude. The indicated altitude is the altitude that your altimeter displays. This remains true regardless of the setting on your altimeter. It's important to acknowledge that indicated altitude may not always be completely accurate. True altitude refers to your actual height above sea level. Ideally, indicated altitude should match true altitude, though perfect alignment is rare. We'll explore strategies to minimize this discrepancy shortly. Absolute altitude signifies the height of your aircraft above the terrain and is measured in feet above ground level, or AGL. Unlike true altitude, absolute altitude can vary based on the topography below. Unless you have a radial altimeter, determining absolute altitude involves a calculation. Subtracting the ground elevation from true altitude gives you the absolute altitude. For instance, if your true altitude is 3,000 feet MSL and you're flying over KUDD in Bermuda Dunes, California, which has an elevation of 73 feet, your absolute altitude is 2,927 feet. Pressure altitude is the height above the standard datum plane. This hypothetical plane exists where air pressure equals 29.92 inches of mercury. It's worth noting that 29.92 inches is an average value and can deviate from sea level. At times, it might even be above or below sea level, while rarely aligning exactly with it. When this alignment does occur, it's called a standard day. Setting your altimeter to 29.92 inches provides you with the pressure altitude, which is critical due to its impact on aircraft performance. Higher pressure altitudes lead to decreased aircraft performance due to reduced oxygen levels, hindering engine power generation. Density altitude is pressure altitude adjusted for non-standard temperature. As we discussed in previous lessons, air molecules are closer together at lower altitudes, resulting in higher static air pressure. As temperature rises, molecules disperse, lowering air pressure from the surface to the top of the atmosphere. Reduced air pressure hinders both aircraft performance and combustion. The memory aid some people use to remember the factors that increase density altitude is the four H's, high altitude, hot temperature, heavy aircraft, and humidity. These factors can collectively impact aircraft performance. However, density altitude calculations involve pressure altitude and temperature, which ultimately determines aircraft performance. Indicated altitude can also be influenced by temperature. Discrepancies arise due to temperature-induced changes in altimeter settings. These discrepancies can lead to differences between true and indicated altitudes. For instance, above 15 degrees Celsius, indicated altitude may indicate higher than true altitude, whereas below 15 degrees Celsius, indicated altitude could be lower than actual. Let's talk about how to adjust the altimeter. Aligning indicated altitude with true altitude is what we're looking to do. This involves setting the altimeter to the airport's reported air pressure. Remember that air pressure changes one inch of mercury for every 1,000 feet of altitude. While official weather sources provide pressure readings, they are already corrected for elevation. These readings reflect the pressure at sea level adjusted for the field's elevation. Navigating through areas with varying air pressures requires diligent altimeter adjustments. For instance, when transitioning from an airfield with an altimeter setting of 30.17 inch to one with 29.17 inches, a pressure decrease of one inch signifies a thousand foot difference. Neglecting to update the setting during such transitions can lead to significant altitude errors. A way to remember this is to think of the saying, from high to low, look out below, and from low to high, high in the sky. One last thing we need to go over, and it's something that might very likely show up on your written test. When you set bigger numbers into the Kulsman window, using the knob on the instrument, you're going to see higher numbers on your altitude display. This happens because the instrument is measuring the difference between the standard sea level pressure and the pressure it's sensing right now. 
When you're dealing with higher sea level pressures, this difference becomes more pronounced, which in turn makes your displayed altitude read higher than it actually is. I hope today's lesson was helpful. If so, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future private pilot ground school lessons. And if you're interested in doing your private pilot ground school online directly with me and have me sign you off to take your FAA private pilot written exam, please reach out at chickswhoflyofficial at gmail.com.